Here we have a molecule that's a little bit more complicated. We have more substituent groups that we need to worry about, but we're still going to take the same approach. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to count for the longest chain of carbon atoms. So I'm going to start by counting here. It doesn't really matter where I start at this point. I'm just worried about how many are in the longest chain. So if I start here, I can say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or I can start here and say 1, 2, three, four, five, six, seven. Now those are my only two possible pathways. Remember, I'm just counting for the length of the chain, and what I see is that my chain has seven carbons, and so I'm going to have the prefix hept, and because we have all single bonds, we're going to use the ending ane. So we have heptane. So I know that's the base of the compound. Now I have to go back and deal with my substituent groups. The first thing I want to do is go back and say, I know I have seven carbons in my chain. I want to go back and see where my chain is and see which atoms are included. Because I know that anything is that's not included in that main chain, okay, that's not included in this chain of seven carbon atoms, is going to be considered a substituent group. And so I'm going to go through and I'm going to circle each of those substituent groups. Okay. So I have two there and I have a third one right there. So I know that in the name of my molecule, I'm going to have three substituent groups named. I also know that I'm going to have three different names because I have three different types of substituent groups. And I'm going to have to worry about two things, where those substituent groups are located and what order I put them in when I name the molecule. So now that I know where my substituent groups are, I know what the the longest chain is. Now I'm going to go back and look at numbering the chain. So I'm going to go back here to the left side and in red I'm going to number from left to right one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Note that I'm only putting numbers on this backbone chain, the seven carbons. I'm not looking at any side groups to put numbers in. Now in blue I'm going to count the other direction. I'm going to count from the right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now these are the only two ways I can count that seven carbon chain because that's the base of the molecule. And what I want to look at is I want to look first at the red letters. And if I look at the red letters, I'm going to look at where those substituents are located. And what I see is that based on the red letters, my substituents are at carbons four, five, and six. Now, if I look at the blue numbers to see where my substituents are located, I see that they're located at 2, 3, and 4. And what I see is that because the, this set gives my first substituent the lowest number, the chlorine here is going to have the lowest number, I'm going to use the number in blue, the let, numbering in blue, to be able to count my substituent groups. It doesn't matter whether we're counting from left to right or right to left. What we're concerned about is that the first substituent has the lowest possible number. That's our main priority. So now I can say, I know I'm looking at the blue groups. Now I can go back through and say, well, what kind of groups do I have in my molecule? I know I have a chloro group. I have a bromo group. And I have a methyl group. So I know these are the three groups that I'm going to have to give a location for and include in the name of my molecule. And so I look back at my numbering, remembering that I'm looking at the blue numbers, and I see that the chlorine group, it becomes chloro, is on the number two carbon, bromine is on the number four carbon, and methyl is on the number three carbon. So now I know both the location and the identity of my three substituent groups. Now I have to take those pieces of information and put it all together to form the name of my whole molecule. So when I'm putting them in order in the name, what I look at is the first letter of the name of the substituent group. So we have C, B, and M. I know that B comes before C in the alphabet and before M. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to name that first. So I'm going to say 4 bromo. Now I need to separate a number and a letter, so I put a hyphen in. My next substituent alphabetically is chloro, so I say 2-chloro. 
And then I look at my last substituent group, 3-methyl. And so now I've put the location or address of all my substituent groups and their names. And now I can put in the name of the base of the compound or the base chain that we have. And so I get 4-bromo, 2-chloro, 3-methyl, heptane. Now notice I wrote them in alphabetical order, so B, C, M. My numbers did not change because the numbers tell me the address, the location of that substituent group in the molecule. So now I can get the complete name of the molecule, hyphens or dashes between letters and numbers, and then I have all the rest of the words, the methyl and the heptane all meshed together into one single word.